Many professions have some kind of continued education requirement, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking it down for accountants or CPAs. Imagining that you were in a CPA situation, what would it look like to build a no-code solution so that you could track your education requirements? That's exactly what I'm going to be tackling here, so if understanding how to unpack this problem is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you unlock the full potential of no code tools. And in this video here today, I'm gonna to be using one of my favorite no code front ends, specifically no loco, and I'm gonna be building my back end inside of Airtable. But before we get started, I first want to invite you to join me for some free automation training. Automation is one of those components of no code tools that will help you reclaim your time and start helping you really actualize a huge return on the investment you make for your no code solutions. If learning more about no code automation is of interest, grab my training at gapconsulting.io slash webinar dash registration. This training was built tool agnostically, meaning that it doesn't matter what software you use to build your automation, you're going to get value from that training. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. I encourage you to follow along with me in Airtable as we start building. And then also, of course, in NoLoco, feel free to use our affiliate links that we will share with this video. But first, I need to start with outlining the problem. Before we ever open up software, before we start building, even in no code, we want to understand the problem first. Now, I am not a CPA. I am not an accountant. So I have to go to the web to figure out like what exactly is the continuing professional education requirement for accountants, for CPAs? Well, it's identified here as being a two-year window from an even year January to an odd year December. So the current one as of this filming would have started January 1st and it will end December 31st of 2025. So it's a two-year window, at least that's how it's calculated or uh, noted out here in Colorado. And if you are certified as an active CPA, then you must be accruing 10 hours of a requirement every quarter. So if you are certified and active for the full two years, you've got four quarters in a year times two, that is eight different sections or eight quarters that we're going to uh, be working with. And each of them is going to have a 10 hour requirement. So if we're active the full two years, we're going to incur an 80 hour accrual, if you will, for our uh, CPE or continuing professional education. Now, there's a bunch of standards, a bunch of requirements, and I'm not going to get bogged down in the nitty gritty, but I do want to get down here to the documentation because every time a CPA completes some of this continued education, then they must get the following. They have to document with the name and uh, contact information of the program sponsor. They must have the participant's name. They must have the title of the program, the field of study, the date the program was offered and or completed, the location of the program, if applicable, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not enough just to say, yeah, 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 I did my work. I, I did my continued education. It has to be documented. And that's what we're going to build here in our no code suite of tools. And if you're new to this channel, you are going to hear me say this a lot, where I strongly recommend that we always outline the process first and then build our back end database before we build that front end component. So now that we understand the process, let's go into Airtable and start thinking through how we can build the proper data schema. Now, number one, we have users. And I've added two users here. I've put myself in uh, with first and last name, left email blank for now. We have a formula that calculates the full name. Pretty standard stuff for users. We can obviously add a lot more, like phone numbers, avatars, like images, you know, profile pictures, etc. We can get to that. I'll allow you guys to play with that on your own time. But the important parts of the schema now, after users, are going to be the certification periods. So we have a start date and an end date for each certification period. Remember, the start dates for at least the state of Colorado start on the 1st of January on an even numbered year, 22 or 24, and they end on the next odd numbered year, so 23 or 25. I've just given them a common name here, 2022-23, and now we're going to link in a third table, our users and the period, the certification period. So here it is. You see why now Gareth signed up here. He was linked to this period because he was active during this period. 
but what were his actual active dates? And so for this example, I've said, look, Gareth starts on 1-1-24 and ends on 12-31-25. That is a full two years. And so we want to calculate that this person was active for eight quarters in that two-year window. And each quarter is going to incur 10 hours worth of time or CPE. And so we look at our accrued hours here. We've got a relatively complicated formula that says, hey, look, if I've got a start date and an end date, then I'm going to calculate the numbers of quarters, add one to it, and multiply all of that by 10 hours. And this is important because if we don't calculate the number of actual accrued hours in that window, then we're not going to know if someone has met their educational requirement or not. Take this example here. I said that, hey, maybe I got my certification activated on 115.23. Well, that period's going to end on 12.31.23. So I've only been active for four quarters out of that eight quarter potential in that span of time. So now only four quarters, it's going to give me accrued hours of 40 that I need to meet. So hopefully this makes sense. We're trying to calculate during that window of time, how active was that person in their CPA certification? And based on that activity level, they're going to have a certain number of hours that they are required to fulfill in their CPE requirements. So now that we have that, we can get to our last table and this is CPE hours. I haven't even built it out yet, but if I flip back to here, you can imagine the different types of things we would bring in. So we're gonna need the link to the user, right? Who is it that got this? But also, what is the program that they completed? What was the field of study? What was the date of the program? What was the location of the program? And what was the number of CPE credits completed? I'm going to let you fill out most of this, but for me, I'm going to really bring in the number of credits. So I really want to see that. I'm going to bring in number of credits. This will be a number field and I can just reduce this. I'm not sure if CPE credits are available in decimals or not. I'm going to assume they go to the nearest integer. I might be wrong about that. I'm not a CPA, so forgive me if this is bad information. So. Now we're going to link up to the users by period. And so you could imagine that if I were in here and I was submitting my own you know, CPE hours that I had accomplished, I would come in and say, hey, for this period of time, I just completed, let's say, five credits and I might, you know, bring in the other variables. What was the date of completion? Uh, what was the area of study, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm really looking at is bringing in that number of credits. And let me just put out one more example as well. I'll say this one was a three credit uh, earn. So I want to be able to roll that data up at my users by period and look at the number of credits earned in that particular span of time by that particular user. And so I can use a roll up field here in Airtable to look at my CPE hours. I'll look at the number of credits earned and I'm going to sum them and create that field. And so in our example, I said I went and earned five credits and then another three. And so that's getting rolled up to eight within that span of time. And we can compare the number of credits earned to the accrued hours that are going to be required to see how far along we are in the overall process. So this is the general data schema that I would recommend that you put in play for something like this, where we need to accumulate some sort of continuing education against some time frame, in this case, the certification periods that we identified. And this all happens down at the user level, and we can see the CPE hours by linking to the users by period. So that was our third table here. And obviously, we know who the user is for each one of these. So now that we've got this schema kind of built and stood up on the back end, now it's time to flip to No Loco. Now, if you don't already have a No Loco account, go ahead and start one on a free trial using the link that we provide with this video. And now we're just going to go into creating a new app. And we could build the back end in No Loco. To be honest with you, this is a great option, but I'm just not fast enough in No Loco still. It's a newer tool for me, and I'm much more comfortable building my database in Airtable or SmartSuite. But notice that you can use any of these other uh, different tools, although it does depend on the level of plan you have. If you want to use the Postgres DB or MySQL, you must be on a business account. So I'm going to sync up to this. I get to name the app. I'll call this CPE for CPAs. And let's go ahead and pick a workspace where I'm going to store this. You probably only have one. 
Uh, but if you have multiple, that's where you would make that decision. And now it's going to deploy our app. So it's going to start creating it, but we haven't yet synced it to our database that we want to get it working with. So it's connected to Airtable, but now we have to find our actual database and we haven't yet given permission on our connected account. So we need to go back to Airtable and inside of our account settings, we're gonna to go to our integrations. Now we click over to our third party integrations and we're gonna scroll on down and find our connection with NoLoco. And you can see that we've shared very specific applications with it already or very specific databases. We wanna share this one that we just created, the CPA CPE application. Let's save those changes, head back to NoLoco now, refresh our connection. So we had to give NoLoco permission to see our Airtable. So if you run into that problem, that's exactly how you overcome it. And now I have my database showing up and I can specify a name to identify the source and we're going to connect it. Now here's the brilliance of NoLoco. It's gonna use AI to analyze the tables that we built in Airtable. And it's going to build at least a framework for us to start our no-code application using that backend saves a lot of time. As you can see, as I'm talking here live, I have not paused my video. I have not done any cuts yet. It is still importing the data, analyzing the tables and bringing everything in that it needs. Now, this is gonna take longer for you if you have a large data source already. You can see here that NoLoco is saying it could take a few minutes depending on the size of your data source, how large it is. And so for us, since this is a relatively small database with a small data source, it won't take all that long. I'm gonna go ahead and pause now. We're gonna boot up when it's done thinking. All right, we are in the final stages here. It has finally brought all of our data in. Uh, using AI to customize our app, it went through the different check marks, and now it's saying, hey, do you want to set up your user list? Does the source have a table of users that you need to access your app? And we did, we built this as our very first table. And so it's gonna ask us where that is. Uh, what do you wanna call a person on the list? Uh, let's call them a CPA. And we're gonna go ahead and choose the table where our users live. And of course we call that table users. And so now we have to sync up and this is all for helping people log in appropriately, right? What table are the users in? We've already assigned. We need an email address. We already built it. We need a first name field. We already built it and we need a last name field. Now, one more thing that we did not include here would be roles. So if you had people on your team that maybe needed admin level permissions, maybe they can see more stuff in the app, and then you have your standard user, you can designate that using a field inside of your data source, easily come in to your data source on your users table, wherever you built that, and just create a role field, use a single select field, and you can designate different roles and just drop in like admin, or default, whatever you wanna name your users, you can then sync that over to NoLoco. We're not actually gonna see that because I haven't refreshed my data source yet. The integration needs to be refreshed, but this is what you could do if you want to give everyone very granular control inside of the final app. Now we're gonna save these up. We can always come back and change that later. And our thing is now built that, I mean, it's that easy, at least the framework for our application. And just like that, our app has been created. You see it now living here inside of our space and we can deploy this now to our team and they can log in and actually see the different requirements, see how close they are to meeting their requirements for a specific period to make sure that they are staying on top of their CPE. Now, in addition to this, we would require probably some sort of approval process, at least internally, to say, yes, we checked off all the boxes. We made sure that we collected the relevant information for each hour that our different CPAs put in for their continued education. But this is an example of how you can launch out an application and the advantage to doing it in a tool like NoLoco is that you don't have to share Airtable with your CPAs. In fact, your CPAs can just work out of your now deployed application. They can download it right to their phone using a progressive web app and see all of their data, but no one else's. Through different user permissions, you can control and make sure that they only see their stuff and limit things so that your users are only seeing the relevant information that they need at the moment in time that they access the application. I know we went pretty quick here and a lot of this was back-end database building, which can kind of get complicated. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out, visit our website. We are here to help. If you ever need an hour or two or longer to put together a project, 
Our team is here to help you get the results you need. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving us a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, but most importantly, keep on building.